بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوری ون آئی ایم ویری پلیز ٹو اسپیک آن دا پلیٹ فارم آف سندھ کالج لیکچرس یوٹیوب چینل آئی ایم ویری مچ تھینکفل ٹو سندھ کالج ایجوکیشن ڈپارٹمنٹ دیٹ وی آر گیون دس گریٹ اپرچونیٹی ٹو بی ان ٹچ ود دا اسٹوڈنٹس دس از فرحانہ ممتاز میمن I am working as a lecturer in English at Government Girls Degree College, Thatta, since 2005. This is prescribed textbook for the students of class first year. There are two one-act plays. Number one is The Count's Revenge and the second play is The Progress. Progress. But I'll go for the textual study of the first play that is The Count's Revenge by J. H. Walsh. My dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are good in the very bad situation of COVID-19. But before watching this video lecture, keep a book of two one act plays, which I showed you in my earlier slide. and keep a pencil in your hand so you may easily understand my lecture thank you the name of the play is the count's revenge it is a really wonderful play prescribed for the students of class first year in this lecture we will cover we will learn about the plot characters and the textual study of the play so i hope my dear students you all have a book in your hand if not then pause the video and take a book in your hand to me as an english teacher this play plays a very important role in improving our four language communication skills among the students my dear students you know all four language communication skills so they are reading writing listening and speaking the students listen to the story and try to retell and rewrite the same so finally after listening the story you student deliver presentation in the class on the same story This method helps the students to improve their skills. Now, before I go to the story, I must tell my students what is the basic difference between the play and the drama. So, come to the point, my dear students. What is the difference between the play and the drama? See, drama refers to a form of written literature. Drama. refers to a form of written literature that is intended for performance on the stage while a play refers to a theatrical performance simply drama is printed text of a play and play is a theatrical performance of that text i hope you got the definition of drama and the play my dear students The name of the play is The Count's Revenge. It is a one act play and this play is written by John Henry Walsh. The name of the writer is John Henry Walsh. This play has one act and it has three scenes. It is taken it is adopted from the French novel The Count of Monte Cristo. It is written by a French novelist Alexandre Dumas. Now come to the point. The play which we are going to discuss that is a revenge play. Count's revenge is a revenge play. Simply because the main character seeks finds revenge on his opponent. The Count's revenge is a melodrama. Now what is melodrama my students i have got it the definition of melodrama from your textbook it is written on page number 37 melodrama is defined as a dramatic piece 
characterized by a sensational incident and violent appeal to the emotion but with a happy ending so you all have book c page number 37 and read the lines this is the definition of melodrama which i have quoted from your textbook which i shown you in my second slide now you have a book in your hand and on page number 7 here is the list of characters so my dear students there are nine characters in the play there are nine characters in the play number one is the count of morsef he is formally called fun and mondigo the count of morsef was formally called fun and mondigo he was a fisherman but later on he served in the french army as a captain he is depicted as the villain in the play you all know that in the play there are hero or heroine or villain so this character the count of morsef is shown as as the villainous character in this play the count's revenge which is written by john henry wash the second character is the countess of morsef the countess of morsef she is a beautiful catalan girl from spain she was formerly called mercedes she was the fiance of edmon dantes but was married to fernand mondigo on false pretext she got married to fernand mondigo on false pretext that her fiance edmon edmon dantes had died in jail so she got married with count of more so i hope you got me the third character is albert he is the son of the count of morsef and the countess of morsef number fourth character is the count of monte cristo formerly called edmon dantes he was a sailor but he was falsely charged of being a spy of bonaparte he therefore was sent to jail for life imprisonment he stayed 14 years in an underground dungeon he managed to escape he went to the island of monte cristo monte cristo is also the name of island so he went to the island of monte cristo and he became a rich trader he became a rich trader and he replaces his name he changed his name in the name of the island means he took the name of monte cristo other characters are bouchon he is an editor of paris newspaper and he is the friend of albert morel is the friend of the count of monte cristo bartuchu is a corsican steward of monte cristo now fun and mondigo who becomes the count of now the count of morsef deceives his friend this man fun and mondigo deceives deceives his friend edmon dantes you remember the name of the characters if you remember the name of the characters then you will understand the story well this gentleman fun and mondigo this villainous character fun and mondigo deceives his friend who was his friend edmon dantes and this fun and mondigo married his fiance his beloved whose name was mercedes i told you about the character of mercedes she was a beautiful catalan girl and at the same time he deceives mercedes and marries her he also deceives his country by surrendering a part of land so this shows us as a villainous character my dear students 
There are three scenes and one act in this play, The Count's Revenge. So the first and the third scene open in the Rue du Halder, that is a well-furnished apartment of the Count of Marseille, whereas the second scene opens in the Chanzalis, that is the apartment of Monte Cristo. Again, I tell you, if you don't have book, just pause the video and take a book. So we will go to the textual study of the text easily. Now, I start scene number one. There are three scenes. So first we start scene number one. Page number eight. Scene number one opens in the apartment of the Count of Marseille in the Rue du Halder, Paris. The Countess means the mother of Albert. The Countess of Morsef is seated and Albert is passing, means walking, passing means walking to and fro in extreme anger. Now here the question arises, why Albert is in extreme anger? Let's see, comes to the story. Albert and his mother, Countess of Morsef, are talking. What they are talking? They are talking that his father, Albert tells his mother, Albert tells her mother that his father is publicly disgraced in the wake of inquiry conducted by the Chamber of Deputies. My dear students, Chamber of Deputies is written at the end of the play. On the charges that his father, the Count of Morsef, in the year of 1823, he surrendered fortress of Yanina to the Turks after taking bribes. The Chamber of Deputies declares the Count of Morsef as a traitor because he is charged of the act of treason, what he committed while serving in the French army as a captain. My dear students, when we start, when we discuss the list of characters, I told you that he was a fisherman. Fernand Mondico was a fisherman. But later on, he went to the French army and served as a captain. So what he did, he committed. He, he, he is charged, the act of treason. And he, what he committed while serving in the French army as a captain. So by the Chamber of Deputies, he is announced as a traitor. So due to these charges, they are in. They feel insult for being declared the family members of a traitor. The scene number one is continuing. Continue. We are still on scene number one. Albert considers his father's disgrace as his own and decides to leave Paris. What does it mean? I'm going to teach you the textual study. So from page number nine, scene number one, see the dialogue of Albert. I'm going to read what I can, what can I do? My father's disgrace is mine. I dare no longer bear the name of Morsef. The name of Morsef is dragged down into the mire. I shall change my name and leave Paris. But there is one other thing that I must do first. I must seek out the man who has done this thing and punish him. I must put this sharp sword of mine through his body. So he says, my father's disgrace is mine. That's why he decides to leave Paris. But before leaving Paris, he wants to take revenge on the person who has exposed his father. For that, he asked Busham. Busham was his friend, friend of Albert. So he asked Busham to find out the name of the hidden enemy because Busham is his friend and an editor of a Paris newspaper. Meanwhile, the Count of Monte Cristo visits the house of Morsef. Who comes in the house of Morsef? The Count of Monte Cristo. 
he kisses the hand of the countess but does not eat anything over there why because it is an arab custom do not eat anything in the house of enemy so the count of monte cristo does not eat anything over there he only kisses the hand of the countess and leave the home and but asks monte cristo to help him because monte cristo was his friend so albert asks monte cristo to help him for finding the man behind the situation but monte cristo refuses see why he has refused monte cristo refuses and suggests him for a planned revenge instead of duel because it is monte cristo it is monte cristo is the man behind revealing the secret by publishing it in the newspaper without revealing his name moreover he also furnish the documental proofs through a woman as i witness to prove the charges while he stays at the back of the scene finally busha succeeds and finds out the name of the person involved in making the charges public in secret manner busham reveals and to albert that the person involved is none else but his good friend monte cristo after listening the name of the monte cristo albert is very angry consequently albert approaches monte cristo and challenges him for fighting a duel now let us see what is duel duel is a one to one fight between two persons a duel normally originated in an insult or injury real or fancied to a gentleman's honor or reputation it is illegal and kept secret from the police my dear students it was all about scene number 1 now let us come to scene number 2 open page number 18 scene number 2 I'm going to read the line from page number 18 an apartment in the house of the count of monte cristo in the champs elysees the count is seated in the center of the room there is a pistol in his hand and there are more pistols beside him from time to time he turns sideways to fire at an unseen target occasionally he reloads a pistol by his side stands his friend morel watching each shot as it goes to its mark so in scene number 2 the count of monte cristo is seated in the center of the room there is a pistol in his hand and there are more pistols beside him what he is doing he is preparing he is preparing for what he is preparing for the duel to be fought with pistols and who is his supporter morel his friend is also present there monte cristo tells his friend morel about albert albert came earlier and challenged him a duel monte cristo asked his friend morel to assist him as a second in the duel to be fought with albert Monte Cristo is quite sure to kill Albert in the duel. The duel is supposed to take place the next day at eight o'clock in the Bastiwances. Bastiwances is an isolated and remote place, free from general public, so it will be a befitting place for duel. Remember, duel was considered illegal way to decide the matter. so the duel was decided the next day at 8 o'clock in the basti wences now see as albert challenges monte cristo for duel so the choice of selecting weapons is the right of monte cristo as challenged one but he abdicates the same in the favor of albert who opts for a pistol as monte cristo is a good swordsman and an excellent or exact marksman as well 
Alberta points Bouchon as his second. Second mean helper. And Monte Cristo chooses Mabel for the same reason. My students, I hope you are getting my lecture. Meanwhile, the Countess visits. The Countess, the mother of Albert. The Countess of Morsef visits Monte Cristo. And she begs for the life of her son. They both have in the Count of Monte Cristo and the Countess of Marseille. The Countess of Marseille have a detailed conversation. Monte Cristo tells her the way her husband deceived him and sent him to an underground dungeon for 14 years. Countess tells him that she was also unknown to the facts. Moreover, Marseille assured her that Edmond Dantes was dead. Monte Cristo promises with the Countess that he would fire into the air to spare Albert because Countess wants to save the life of Albert. So Monte Cristo promises that he would fire into air to save the life of Albert. He subsequently makes a will in which Morel and Bartusho are appointed as witness. It is a very emotional moment when the Count says to Morel, Ah, oh, Morel, when a man resolves to avenge himself, he should first of all tear out the heart from his breast. These lines I have quoted from page number 25. It was all about scene number two. Now we come to scene number three. In scene number three, Albert has gone to fight duel with the Count of Monte Cristo. The Countess of Morsef is restless and passes to and fro, and the clock strikes nine. Remember, the duel was to be fought at eight o'clock. Morsef and Countess are waiting for news about the duel. Morsef and the Countess are talking, mean both husband and wife are talking. Countess gives a very cool response to her husband. Countess says, I do not think that Albert will be brought home dead. It is another man who, I mistake not, has died this morning. See, I have taken these lines, I have quoted these lines from your textbook to one act plays from the play The Count's Revenge, page number 26. What Countess says, I don't think that Albert will be brought to him dead. Means he is comfortable. She knows it is another man who I mistake not has died this morning. She is quite sure that his lover has spared the life of her son. Now see the turning point of the play. Or we may say the ending part of the play. Albert returns home from the dual place and tells his father and mother that instead of fighting, duel ha he has begged pardon. Instead of fighting duel, he has begged pardon from the Count of Monte Cristo. After listening this, his father is infuriated. The Count of Morsef is angry. The duel does not take place. Albert apologizes Monte Cristo for his misbehavior. When Morsef comes to know that person in the disguise of Monte Cristo is Edmond Dantes, he raises a pistol to shoot him dead. Subsequently, they both fall into wrestling, which is intervened by Bouchon. Suddenly, the pistol goes off and Morsef falls and dies there immediately. So, my dear students, it was the story, it was the textual study of the play, The Count's Revenge, written by J.H. Walsh. It is a revenge play, and the man character, the Count of Monte Cristo, is avenged, and the villainous character is exposed and punished. The play is set in France and the setting and the names of the characters are French. 
my students we have learned some terms like melodrama dune second some places like rudu helga shanzalis the fortress of yamina bas divan so you are required what you should do at your home make sure that you have textbook so you should go for textual reading underline difficult words and find their meaning you should write a brief note on any of your favorite character and you may deliver presentation before the mirror in their homes thank you very much